Nice trout here. Well, decent one. Yeah. So they are here. Sweet. Jeffrey's on. Oh. Oh yeah. Here it comes. It's a nice fish. Yeah, these are nice trout. Yeah. There we go. He's got a hole back there. Nice. Wow. That's one at successive successive calf. These guys are strong fish. Strong fish. Jeff is on. Three fish. These are all about 14 to 15. Oh, yeah. Oh, what the heck? Oliver and David and I gotten into a nice, or we did get into a nice little school right here by the wall. Now they are, uh, they calm down a little bit. As is the case with trout usually. They have a run and then they calm down. How many times have you said or been told the trout bite was on fire? And then it just stopped, like a switch was thrown. What happened to our trout bite? I can't answer that. In order to know with much certainty, we would probably need to build a behavioral model using a bunch of inputs, many of which we don't have. However, let's look at what we know about trout behavior and see if that can give us any clues about what killed the bite. First, let's clarify some terminology. When we say we are catching from a school of trout, in most cases we are actually talking about a shoal of trout. A school is a tight grouping of fish that is moving in the same direction and is doing so for the purpose of protection. These are examples of schools of mullet in a protective grouping. Wow. Whoa, mullet. Oh, nuts. A shoal, on the other hand, is a loose grouping of fish, which is used for feeding, and that's the grouping we are interacting with when we catch a bunch of trout quickly and at the same spot. The best footage I've ever seen on shoaling trout is from TB Wild Images. I'm going to link to one of their videos, which you may have already seen, but even so, I suggest you go and view it again, and then come back here. But before you go, see if you agree with me on what I'm seeing. Individual trout move less when they're shoaling, and therefore expend less energy to feed. The trout are patient. They wait for the bait to get close before lunging, and they don't chase for more than a couple feet. I especially like the action starting at 27 seconds, where three trout play the bait. The trout don't lunge in all at once, but act like a basketball team, waiting for one player to get a good shot. Alright, here's a video link, but don't forget to come back here. So when bait is present, we can see the efficiency of trout feeding in a shoal. But what happens if the bait's not there? Have you heard fishermen talking about how the bait got scattered and so the bite was bad? Might have been due to strong winds or maybe it was after a, a prolonged feeding frenzy. Either way, I believe this theory to be true because it fits with the principle of energy conservation and balance, 
The principle is that the trout has to consume less energy to feed than it gets from the bait that it catches. So I believe that a shoal of trout that is formed as an efficient way of feeding is not going to start feeding unless there's enough bait in the water. And that's simply a logic statement based on the whole purpose of forming a shoal. This is one explanation of why you may be catching nothing or maybe catching an occasional trout at a particular spot and suddenly it completely erupts into a feeding frenzy. And on the flip side, if the threshold for a minimum amount of bait is reached, then the bite may suddenly stop like someone threw a switch. If you're like me, you mostly think of trout as predators, so you might be wondering if speckled trout actually school for protection. Turns out many other creatures like to eat trout as much as we do. These include redfish, sharks, dolphins, jacks, and others. The marine ecosystem is a tough place to live. This size of redfish will eat a 12 inch trout, but the same size redfish could also become a meal. Another characteristic of fish schooling for protection is that they are typically very similar in size. Any fish that stands out becomes a target. And the fish we catch in a feeding frenzy are typically similar in size. It's my understanding that these similarly sized trout feel confident to feed in open water because they can rapidly transform from shoal to school when danger approaches. Following the logic here, I would assume that too few trout will have the opposite effect and could suppress some feeding activity. So I wonder what happens when we really hammer a shoal of trout and significantly reduce their numbers. Do we kill the bite ourselves? Look, the feeding behavior of a speckled trout is complex and there's gonna be a lot of factors that affect it. And we have just a tiny little bit of influence there. So don't beat yourself up if the bite stopped or you had a bad day, it was just locked jaw all day. There's probably not much that you could do about it. The best that we can do is try to match our fishing activities with the conditions that the trout will key in on as favorable for feeding. And this is often simply being at the right place at the right time and presenting the bait in a way that fits a trout's expectation of what their food should look like. Hey, well, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel and good luck out there dealing with the complexities of fishing.